This video has been a long time coming. Over the years, many have asked me to put together a guide of sorts on how to be good at AC Unity. That's tricky to do because I'm not you, I'm not in your head, and I don't know what you personally need to improve at. On the other hand, I've also been asked to make a collection of tips on all the little tricks that helped me the most. Things I discovered that have made the game easier or more enjoyable for myself, and things that some people may not know about that would help them too. So while the only way I can really teach you to get better at this game is to coach you one-on-one, -on -one, which I can do if you're on PS4 or PC, another easy way to do it is to just give you all the information that has assisted me with all the flashy tricks you see me do. If you're very new to Unity or have never played it, you won't know most of these. If you finish the game once or twice, you'll have stumbled onto several on your own, and if you know almost everything in here, then you either watch myself like a maniac or you talk to me very often. Whatever the case, these are the techniques in AC Unity that helped me the most, with lessons on how to do them and good times to use them. I hope you enjoy, and may this help you stay sneaky. Movement is the most important element of many games. The ability to always be in the right place at the right time without other forces stopping you from doing so is critical to achieving your goals. This is especially true in stealth games, and Assassin's Creed in particular uses the fantasy of limitless movement possibilities as part of its ludonarrative identity. So the first thing we want to do in any Assassin's Creed game is understand movement. I promise you, if you're having trouble in any of the games in the series, getting better at movement will improve your entire experience. So let's start with some of the movement tricks that made an impact on me in Unity. Unity's cover system is a common cause for complaint. It's very sticky, sometimes it can be tough to make it do what you really want, especially when you're mashing buttons trying to get Arno off of a low wall or corner that he loves very much. Hold your left stick or movement keys to the side and tap high profile for a brief moment. Arno will easily leave cover, and you can then continue whatever movement you want. Using parkour down on the side of a building and only holding high profile and drop doesn't really look so great, as eventually you'll just fall in front of the wall facing it. You'll then have to turn around and use center camera, which can be jarring. You could dismount with a back eject as you get near the bottom, but that can either shoot you in a direction you don't want if you're just moving down to the streets, or you can mistime it because you're not sure when Arno will do his final descend animation. You're just holding the buttons down, after all. As you near the bottom though, just start holding descend and sideways. Arno will do a fluid, sometimes stylish dismount, and the nicest part is that your camera will actually follow his back. Very nice. You can't side eject in Assassin's Creed Unity in most situations, but you can side hop which has a similar purpose. Whenever Arno is hanging on a wall or handhold with his feet planted against it, look out for platforms or climbable objects that are on the same height as, or just a little lower than him. Holding high profile with movement sideways toward the object or platform will have Arno kick off of the wall and hop onto it. This can be used for faster climbing, and it's a very smooth and quick way to change direction. Practice it, it's not hard to start recognizing which places you can do it on, and this move is usually very consistent. Back eject is still in Unity, just be careful not to use it with Reckless Abandon, because its sibling move, Catch Ledge, doesn't truly exist in this game. There is a version of it called Breakfall, but as far as I'm aware, it's completely random, and there's no way to trigger it every time. I've tested this by slamming into walls over and over again on a back eject or force jump, but I haven't found a way. If anyone knows something about this, tell me. Back to the back eject, you can use this to rapidly change direction, or even to climb certain parallel close walls with great speed. Remember that if there's something behind you, you can often eject to it. Think of it like a wall jump or wall kick from other games, just done while hanging on a wall with your hands and feet on it. Ranged weapons in stealth games are effective because they allow you to act upon an enemy without putting your body near them. This allows a player to bypass the normal risk-reward rules of a stealth scenario, since they're not exposing themselves to visual identification. It's a decisive advantage that negates the drawbacks of moving through an observed space, and the price you pay for playing this way is that ranged weapons have bullet costs and cannot be used infinitely. You're trading a risk now for a risk later. If you use your stealth projectiles in this moment, you may not have them when you really need them. 
but since AC Unity allows you to equip Arno with gear that increases your ranged ammunition, this is a mindset you can eventually let go of, and then use projectiles freely. Until that moment, though, you'll have to be a bit more conservative, but learning the ways projectiles affect your enemies is important because it lets you be less afraid of using them. Many players in games tend to forget about their items and their ranged tools because they're worried about whether it's the right time, how exactly they work, and other such things, seldom incorporating them smoothly into their approaches. We're going to change that. When a game is willing to happily submit something to us, we take it. We use it. Berserk Blades can temporarily stun enemies. This wipes out all of their AI for a brief moment, which means they cannot detect you or do anything at all before the poison kicks in and they go crazy. This is useful if you want to keep someone standing still to rush them with an assassinate. It's great for running toward a guard that's staring straight at you, because you can cancel his detection meter while it's filling up, and if you're just fighting a single guard that's not an agile because they'll dodge it, you can even use this to pull both of you out of combat mode. Then, when Arno puts away his sword, you get a free assassination. Use this to resolve conflict with lone guards quickly, even if they far outclass you in terms of HP and damage. The longer you fight even a single enemy, the higher the chances that a wandering guard might spot your fight and call for help. Hitting an enemy with two berserk blades in a row makes them overdose on the poison and die. The death animation resulting from this is extremely long, and enemies don't notice the guard has been killed until after he's already on the ground. This is the stealthiest way to kill someone in the whole game. If you really don't want to spook your enemies, but you want to kill a key target, double berserk him. This is also a handy thing to know if you are out of phantom blades and still want a stealth kill, but you cannot currently reach the enemy with your body. Phantom Blade damage is determined by your overall damage stat, special thanks to Sir Holmes for figuring this out. This means the better weapons you have equipped, the more damage your Phantom Blade will rip out in a single body shot or quick shot. It doesn't make much sense, I know, but that's how it works, so just keep it in mind. On a max damage Arno, the only two enemies you cannot quick shot in the entire game are level 5 Spearmen and level 5 Brutes. That means if you see any guard that is not a Spearman or a Brute, and you are maxed out in terms of damage, just go ahead and quickshot everyone. Keep up your flow. For those two guard types, it's safer to quickshot with Berserk than rush them with your Hidden Blade. Gunners will always die to one gunshot or Phantom Blade, no matter their stats or yours. It's just a part of their design, so don't worry about them at all. Firing a Phantom Blade into a wall or floor very close to them will cause enemies to turn to look at the disturbance. This is a handy way to sneak past people if you don't want the commotion of a cherry bomb or don't have any more of them. This does not work with Berserk Blades for some reason, as enemies cannot hear them at all. It's possible to use your pistol or rifle in a stealthy manner even though it makes so much noise. One way is just to be very far away from your enemy when you shoot them, like being on a rooftop so they can't hear, but there is another way that can be done anytime a smoke bomb would not expose you. Putting smoke on your current position, using eagle vision, then firing at enemies from inside it will keep you undetected, because they may be able to hear you, but they can't identify you with their eyes. Make sure to run away quickly, because when the smoke clears, you don't want to be there. This is especially useful for dealing with gunners who are spotting you from a long way away. Which brings me to... Phantom Blades and Berserk Blades have shorter range than pistols and rifles, which both have the same range, both being firearms. This is a trade-off. Your stealthy projectiles have lesser reach, whereas your longest ranged attack is very loud and obvious. If you ever wonder why a gunner can see you but you can't quickshot him or aim at him, it's because a gunner's sight range is the same as your own gun attack range. Throw smoke on yourself and scratch the gunner out with your own pistol or rifle, then leave. This is an easy way to deal with a situation in this game that frustrates many players and gets many complaints. Projectiles would be considered tools in other Assassin's Creed games, but Unity distinguishes between tools and projectiles by putting both item types on separate buttons, letting you combo between them more rapidly. Tools in Unity come largely in the form of various grenades that Arno has access to, which are much more about strategically altering the flow of stealth rules around their impact location than they are about actually killing foes. Cherry Bomb Consistency Cherry bombs are a funny little item. They're advertised by the game as a distraction item, a tool for manipulating the attention of guards and making them look where you want. But the problem is they don't work all the time, do they? 
They actually do, but they do not explain themselves, and the rules that define how they work don't make much sense when you think about them. See, cherries will only ever work when a guard can see their impact point if he turns to look at them. So if a cherry bomb is tossed behind a wall or a chair or a couch, and line of sight between the guard and the impact point is broken by some object or piece of furniture, he will not turn to look at it. I know, it's weird. It's a sound-based item, but they have to be able to see it, otherwise their AI won't hear it. Wild. But, once you know this, using cherry bombs becomes very easy, and combined with smoke, you can really select where guards place their vision, or deny it altogether. Smoke bombs are extremely powerful. They're the most important stealth item. Throwing a smoke bomb allows you to move through the area without any fear of being spotted, and slapping them on top of groups of guards lets you rush in and hidden blade them all in quick succession. This is basically your stealth opener. You can choose to play without them, but the enhanced flow, speed, momentum, and fluidity that they add to Unity and Syndicate stealth gameplay means that this is never something I would recommend. Unless you're doing a challenge run, or you have some kind of personal vendetta against the item, you should be using smoke. Because when someone asks me, Leo, I'm terrible at AC Unity and AC Syndicate stealth, what am I doing wrong, please help me, the number one thing I always look for is, are they using smoke to engage and create visual cover for themselves? And most of the time, the common link between all these players who struggle with staying undetected is that, that they just don't throw smoke grenades. Poison bombs will one throw kill gunners. They can also be combined with a Berserk Blade to harvest large groups of guards all clashing with each other. Poison is a silent item and will not attract attention. Beyond this, I haven't actually discovered if there's a method to increase their damage, but if someone has ideas, I'd love to hear them. Maybe we can figure this out together. There are a few more unique tactics in AC Unity for staying undetected that don't fit neatly into other categories. Hilariously, these are some of my favorites. SSI Trick. This is something that has existed in all the games, but it's easiest for a beginner to understand in Unity and Syndicate. When a guard's social status indicator, or detection meter, starts to bleed over from yellow to red, and you hear the little ping that accompanies that shift, breaking line of sight and going somewhere he can't see you anymore will leave behind a hologram of where you just were. Guards will always go to this hologram. This is extremely useful for separating and isolating guards from their comrades, and is especially great because it's a visual lure, not an audio lure. This means that you won't accidentally pull three guards at the same time because you chucked a firecracker near them. You can entice a single enemy to come toward you, where you can then eliminate him with a cover kill, berserk into assassinate, or phantom blade. You can also just not worry about him, and use his shifted position to open other movement routes or assassinations. Disguise is really strong, and I forget it exists sometimes. Pointing your camera at any character in the world and using the skill will hack the simulation and temporarily transform you into that NPC. As long as you walk slowly and do not move directly in front of a guard's face, your disguise will remain up. Killing guards with your hidden blade will shatter the disguise. Choking guards out will not until the end of the animation, but this isn't very useful. What is useful though is that using smoke bombs does not break disguise until after the bomb is already impacted. This lets you get close to a group of guards and throw smoke in their face before taking care of them. Disguise has an appropriately long cooldown. In stealth skill videos, this ability is often used for non-lethal pacifist or ghost play styles, and not so much for reapers because it slows you down too much for effective flow through a mission. Moving into and getting lost in a crowd will make you invisible to your enemies, as the immense amount of visual noise makes it hard for their mind to process the appearance and visual identity of a single hooded rogue. Enemies will detect you if they can step into your crowd blend circle, but being in blend state like this will also make your low profile hidden blade stabs completely invisible. You can use this to kill guards even as their allies are staring at them, without being discovered. Move quickly from guard to guard and stab them all in quick succession this way to remain undetected. Just remember, don't run or lose your cool. 
because high profile actions will decay your blend state and scatter the crowd around you, so move at your standard low profile speed. A truly large crowd also empowers you to move through your enemy's territory without even taking a single life, even if there are guards all around you. They cannot strike what they cannot identify. Stay calm. Hide in plain sight. Every enemy archetype demolished. Gunners die to one quick shot of a phantom blade or a gun no matter their level. They also die to one heavy attack or finisher from most decent weapons, and they can be hit by a ground stab. Normals can be attacked, but will sometimes block. They can be perfect parried and this will open them to damage. They can be quick shotted, and they can be hit by a ground stab. Spearmen cannot be attacked, they will consistently block just about everything. They cannot be staggered and will always shove Arno off. They can be quick shotted though, and they can be perfect parried, which opens them up to damage. They can be hit by a ground stab. Agiles will block just about everything, and will often dodge your attacks too. They have a 3 hit combo. The first two hits are normal parries, the last hit lets you get a perfect parry if you counter at the last moment. They cannot be quick shotted, and they will roll away from a ground stab. Brutes can never be perfect parried. Brutes can never block. Their ability to tank damage is purely because they have large health bars. They cannot dodge quick shots, and they cannot be grounded. Parry, stagger, insta kill. The god combo for fun and profit. So some of these enemy types seem pretty annoying, don't they? But there's a secret. Assassin's Creed's combat is usually revolved around the counter kill, the critical ability that feeds even into kill chains in AC Brotherhood and Revelations, and to an extent applies to the Kenway saga as well. But AC Unity does not revolve around counter or parry. Not really. Getting parries is just a means to an end, which is to get staggering strikes on enemies. Staggering Strike is the cornerstone of Unity combat, and a player that plays without it will die more often and be less effective. I'm going to show you why, and it's because of Arno's God Combo. The God Combo is what happens when you get a perfect parry, then a Staggering Strike, which grounds an enemy immediately, and then follow up with a quick shot from any projectile, yes, even a Berserk Blade. What this does is instantly kill whatever enemy you just did that to, regardless of their level or stats. It is the absolute fastest way to kill enemies in this game in combat if your weapon is not strong enough to one-shot them. An enemy on the ground will never dodge a quick shot, and every enemy that can be perfect parried can be grounded, because of the insta-ground property after one. This does not work on brutes, obviously, because they can never be perfect parried and they shrug off staggers, However, Brutes are balanced, because to give us something back after they took our insta-kill away here, you be designed Brutes so they cannot block. Just slash down Brutes first before other enemies, and have no concern about laying into them. They'll never stop you. So remember, perfect parry, staggering strike, quick shot. This is your standard kill combo. When an Agile throws a stun bomb at you, it will cover your screen in blinding light and rob you of your vision. Or it would if you were a normal human with normal human senses. As an assassin with a high concentration of Isu DNA, the fragment of knowledge, the piece of the sixth sense that some people call eagle vision, is very easy for you to access. Using eagle vision after being flashed will let you retain awareness of your surroundings and enemies. Sometimes lockpicking a door is a dangerous proposition, because whatever enemies are on the other side are staring straight at it. In co-op, players who are not doing the lockpicking can hold a smoke bomb on the door their ally is working on. When they hear the final pins click or their partner tells them when, releasing the smoke bomb on the door allows concealment while the door opening animation finishes. And now. Thank you. Welcome. This smoke opener can then be used to ravage the room on the other side with any tactics of your choice. Amazing. <laughs> Gunning foes down from inside a smoke cloud is a fast and efficient way to resolve an ally's combat state if their enemies have not detected you yet. Use this to mitigate money loss during heists or just to finish fights as fast as you can. Holding the quickshot button down instead of tapping it will zoom in your screen and display a white dot as a cursor. Tapping jump or cover will then place a player tag on the object or enemy you are pointing at. 
You can play several of these at a time. Holding cover while zoomed will wipe out all player tags of your color and refund them to you so you can use them some more. You can also just keep placing them, and when you exceed the limit, the earliest one you put down will be deleted to allow the latest one to exist. This is sloppy and confusing though, so just wipe them every time. There are a few clever ways to use player tags. Firstly, I use them to mark key locations that I want to come back to. If there's an entrance to a building, like a door or a window, and I don't want to be confused about where it was on my way back, I will mark that entrance with a player tag so I can keep track of it. They can also be used like a dotted line to demonstrate intent in co-op, like a series of positions to move through or a sort of arrow pointing to a specific place. Finally, they can be used to mark guards, and the tag will follow the enemy as they move around. Since other players can see each other's player tags, this is a way to upgrade your communication in co-op. Playing Unity without a microphone is not recommended in general, but if you have to, players can read each other's intent if they use player tags in clever ways. Mind you, even one person speaking is way better than none. With even one player who can give orders or make suggestions, a greater degree of planning is possible, and that person can infer their silent allies' intentions by watching them carefully or paying attention to what they do, whether they agree with a tactic or command or reject it. So, these were some tricks I know of in AC Unity. If I missed some, or you have a few of your own that you think I should talk about, type them at me and you just might see them in a later video. Thank you, everyone, for watching, and a rogue recommends you practice all these techniques so you can stay sneaky.